Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today I thought I'd show you some upgrades, additions, a general state of the union of the fish room. And the fish room is behind this door. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about is we're often talking about mental health and how good the hobby is for mental health. Um, people who keep ponds love the tranquility, people who have aquariums love the tranquility of the fish, bringing a bit of nature from outside to inside, and it's true most of the time. But I'm going to show you one of the most stressful things I do every day. Friends and followers of the channel will know that my fish room is behind this door, and that a project that I've been working on for the best part of a year is Mega Tank, which is my DIY aquarium. It sprung a leak. Another f***ing leak. In the same spot as it leaked last time at leak, which is great as an aquarium and as a project, it's great. But as an aquarium, it lacks a little bit of water tightness, which is kind of fundamental. So this is the thing that I do every single day. Just watch down there, the fear and trepidation of opening the garage door to see whether or not there's a tidal wave of water behind it. Yes. Step one complete. Because in reality, that wall, all that stuff's on, that's the back of my fish room. So fish room's built into the garage. It's own little insulated box, which I access through those curtains there, if you can see them. But yeah, when it leaks, it leaks. It comes through the wall and comes out here. So yeah, step one. So now step two, which is the second most stressful thing, is everything still alive? There's Humphrey. Humphrey's good. There's Mega Tank in all its glory. And who's this? We have a new inhabitant. So the reason this bit is stressful is because these are new fish to me. The snakehead um, is a fish that I was I rescued, if you like. Go and have a look. There'll be a playlist up here about Mega Tank's trials and tribulations. Um, but this is a big fish. I don't know the history of this fish. I haven't kept this fish for very long. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing with them. I don't know whether I should be adding new fish or not. And finding the right fish to add that's not going to be too aggressive for him or he's not going to be too aggressive to it. And I found this guy, which is a tilapia. To my mind, the perfect combination of big enough not to get eaten and peaceful enough not to eat anything. But my God, look at those colors. So in reality, these are all problems I've made for myself. I said, if you've joined me in any of my live streams recently, I'm going to concentrate on cleaning out the fish room. So because of this leaky bugger, they had to have a swimming pool just sat here, which took up all the extra space we had in the fish room. Um, since I've fixed this and it's holding so far, touch everything, um, got a bit of, bit of normality back in the fish room. So I've got to clean out some tanks, do all the water changes, start to get them ready. And I said to myself, no more fish room. Wait until you've got a bit of a routine going, a bit of normality going in the fish room. But I'm a creature of habit. And every Saturday, I take my daughter to gymnastics. And while she's at gymnastics, I pop into the local Maidenhead Aquatics. And the local Maidenhead Aquatics, this week, this guy. Um, it's not completely bonkers. Um, the snakehead, I'm obviously anthropomorphizing this, but he looked a bit sad. He always looks sad, it's the way his head is shaped. But he looked a bit down in the dumps um, because he didn't have anybody in there with him. So I wanted to get a fish. I don't want this to be a one fish tank. It's a massive aquarium, eight foot by four foot by three foot. It'd be a very nice home for just the snakehead, but I wanted them to, I wanted this to be almost a community of large fish. Um, but I wanted to find something big enough that he wouldn't eat and big enough that wouldn't eat him, or peaceful enough that wouldn't eat him. So because I don't know the history and the temperament of the snakehead, I don't know what's going to work well. But this tilapia was absolutely beautiful and seems like the perfect start to fish. So I can observe them. He's got something in there to keep him happy keep him interested, keep him engaged, and the tilapia is not going to eat him, and is too big to be eaten by him, and looks freaking awesome, if you ask me. So, there you go, that was my first purchase. He's probably, he's a good 10 to 12 inches. Electric blue, some reds, yellows, all kinds of colours in there, it's fantastic. 
But because I'm a mentalist, that wasn't the only new fish that I got. I also got these. This is something I'm really excited about. These are Bucktooth Tetra Exodons. These are the craziest little... They're like piranhas, but of the Tetra world. I've wanted these for a long, long time, and they had these in, and they're a good size. They will get bigger. I'm just keeping them in here in an empty tank for the moment to quarantine, check behavior, all that good stuff, make sure everything's well. But they are so fast, so colorful, so aggressive. You really can't keep them with other fish, um, but my God, did they tear things apart. Um, so a really active tank, and like I say, I've been wanting to keep these for years. So there's the new fish. I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of all the tanks just because we've not been down here in a while and there have been changes, things have moved. Things have gone up, down, sideways, backwards, all those good things. Let's have a quick rundown of all the tanks, shall we? And first, nothing. This is basically a snail farm now. So this is a snail farm. It's got nothing but ramshorn snails in it at the moment. Not even that many ramshorn snails, so it's not a very good snail farm. But the snail farm is for the pea puffers. The pea puffers are in here. Um, this is food for this tank. They're doing fine. Um, it's getting a little bit overgrown. This is one of the tanks I've still to tidy properly, scape properly. Uh, just mid-water change at the moment. This tank, empty. This tank, we've got the bucktooth tetras. This tank, this was meant to be the shell dwellers tank, but I can't find any shellies. So at the moment, this is the black ghost knife fish baby tank. Um, I really don't see much of the Black Ghost Knife. He still is in there. He doesn't eat very much. Uh, checking old videos, he has grown a little bit, but he seems to be a very picky eater and is eating very little amounts. But we shall crash on nonetheless. Let's continue along the top. This tank, nothing. This tank, nothing. This tank, nothing. This tank, nothing. So you can see why it's quite hard for me not to buy new fish when I have so many empty tanks. This tank on the end having nothing in it. This did have my gold saw in it. It has completely disappeared. It's not in the tank, dead. It's not in any other tank. I can't find it anywhere. I'm, I've got to assume it jumped. I mean, I, I do have a lid on it, but it's a lid that doesn't completely fit properly. But I've pulled everything out. I can't find a body. We have a bit of a joke on my Friday night live streams that ghosts don't exist or do exist depending on which audience member you are I'm very much in the don't exist pile but could a ghost have done it just to taunt me on the ground floor of this shelving unit we have Humphrey Humphrey is very much the mascot of the channel he's my my little pal when I work from the office here uh, I usually have my office set up here when I work from here he's just great he's constantly interacting with me he He's, he's very larger than life, let's put it that way. He was a little bit sick, I think. Um, his hump started to, his cock started to deflate, which is never a thing that we want to happen. But seems to be back, tip-top health. Um, did a big, large water change yesterday for him, and it seems to be getting back to normal, and he's his usual feisty self. Um, but he's great, he's down there. This tank here is, it's a bit of a mishmash. This is, Currently the shyest fish in the universe. It's, I have, what have I got? We've got three Oscars and one Severum in here. And I don't know what's wrong. I just don't get it. I've tried more decorations, less decorations, more hidey, hidey holes, pots. Whenever I'm in here, the Oscars just cower away in the corner. Um, the Severum sometimes comes out. I mean, after I've been in here a while, the Severum comes out and swimmed around happy enough. They seem to eat happy enough, but they really just don't seem to be loving life at the moment and they hide away whenever I'm in here. I've had a camera on them to see if it's just me that's making them feel this way, but they spend a lot of their time just huddled away, not into it. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong with this one. So any, any advice, suggestions, happy to take them. Um, yeah, this was the plan that I would grow these all out the Oscars certainly and put them in mega tank as well but if they're going to be this shy down in the dumps I don't really think that's going to work in this tank we've got the goldfish plain old goldfish nothing special about goldfish everyone hates goldfish I really like them I think they're cool as hell um, 
the goldfish I'm using to get through all my duckweed. So I've got duckweed production going on in many, many, many tanks. Uh, and the goldfish just will eat that stuff up like they're just, it's going out of fashion. But they're in there, they're happy enough. They're so bright, so... I don't know why they don't get a better deal in life. Um, so bright and so inquisitive, they're, they're great fish. So I really like them. They'll be going back out in the pond soon, but for now, they're hooky in there. So that takes us on to this wall of tanks. First of all, we'll start with my other DIY tank. This is the IKEA glass tank. Um, fine, we've got the, the rainbow fish and the um, Corydoras in here. But what, what's been going on here is a massive overload of salvinia and the plants. So this just needs a good trim. So that's one of the jobs I need to get back to. It's just massively overgrown, it's blocking out most of the light. But it means there's no algae, which is a good thing. Um, but everything in there is doing well. We've had a few more babies from the rainbow fish. The fact that there is so much more vegetation, there may well be more babies in there for the Coreys as well that I can't see. Um, but yeah, it's just it's doing its own thing. This tank down here, underneath, empty. This tank over here is the Zebra Daniels. Next to that, the cherry shrimp. If we go upstairs a little bit, we have some random endlers and guppies on the end. Some uh, less random guppies. We'll go and take a closer look at them. And, and the jade shrimp in this one, and empty. And then up on the top row, we have the blue neon gobies. Then we have the fish I can never remember the name of, but I will stick on screen because that's the only way I seem to be able to remember that. But they, they're doing quite well. I think I saw some babies in there, but then I haven't seen them for a few days. Sure don't know. So in this tank, we've got a bunch of babies. These are the... Uh, I've got COVID brain at the moment. I had COVID a few weeks back and it's totally made me lose my mind. But I, I would say LT great endlers, but I don't know if that's right or not. But in here, we've got a load of babies and some very... So we've got babies, juveniles, and adults. Um, and it's making me think that they weren't... Oh, look at this bloody bit of air lane. It's making me think that they weren't very good quality LT Grey Endlers, if that's what they were in the first place. Because they're all so different. So I can't really tell what the babies are doing, but we've got some juveniles that have got some weird colourings and like a black dorsal fin and a red tail and just nothing like what the parents were looking like. And that's all that's ever been in this tank, so there's no other fish jumping in it from another one. And none of them are coming out, so this is a bit of a waste of time. That's all. Hopefully have inserted some B-roll in there so this isn't completely pointless. So that's it for livestock in the fish room anyway. Um, this is the bit where I ask you for some help. I want to know what you would suggest doing with Mega Tank. So I'm purposefully leaving it empty at the moment. Uh, in terms of decoration, but I want to add more fish and I'm happy to add in some decorations if that will help add the new fish. Suggestions, what, sh what fish should I be adding? What would you be adding if this was what you've got? Uh, in terms of stocking, obviously we've got the giant emperor snake head and we don't really know the history. I do know that it lived with a giant datanoid and it was a giant datanoid and uh, a peacock bass, but it, the time that I had this and the bass together, it was battering the bass showing no aggression with the tilapia since I've had it. Not feeding the greatest, I mean in terms of feeding, the guy that I got it from suggested this, this is what they were eating. Um, I can't really get them to show any interest in this whatsoever. I've tried all kinds of pellets, whether it's the big cichlid gold, whether it's the sinking catfish pellets, semi-floating catfish pellets. I've tried live foods, I've tried, not live foods, frozen foods like entire bloodworm cubes, I've tried actual earthworms, I've tried mussels, prawns. It's, it's just not a voracious eater. He has eaten the worms, so I have seen him eat worms, I've seen him eat a pellet, but he's not a very voracious feeder. So again, any tips, anybody that's kept these or big fish and trying to get them to eat. I mean, the tilapia has been in there a day and he's eaten everything that I've thrown in the tank, so that's good. Um, so yeah, Tips for stocking, for feeding, for general care, decorations, should I leave it bare bottom, should I put in some sand? I'm not saying I'm going to do everything because no doubt I will get a hundred comments with a hundred different ideas and I can't do everything obviously. 
The other one that I was interested in was the Oscars. I don't know what's going on with the Oscars. Why are they like this? What am I doing wrong? It must be something that I'm doing wrong. Have I set the tank up completely wrong? Everyone else that I've seen with Oscars, they don't behave like this. So I, I just don't get it. So again, any ideas you've got with them. Um, want to do a bit of a feeding video with the Exodons here, and we'll do that in a second. But one further order of business is, if you're watching this video anytime near when it comes out, the next Friday coming will be my 100th live stream. Um, so 9pm UK time, come and join us there. There might be some giveaways, there might be some fun games and different things to do in there. So Friday, 9pm UK time, come and join us on the 100th live stream. But now, should we do a bit of a feeding video? We'll start off with Humphrey and we'll end on the Tetras. So we've got some earthworms. Delicious. This is pretty fast, so watch quickly. Sometimes if he doesn't notice them, that's when you get... No, go on. Yeah, Humphrey's just like, yum, yum, I love that. Lovely. Here you go. Gone. There's not really much to it. <laughs> There's not really much to it with Humphrey. I'll attempt to feed of the big tank. Because this is something that I have. Where are my tweezers? Because if I wiggle them a bit, sometimes that works better. I have had an amount of success with worms. So I don't know if you can see it, but that's the worm here, it's going down. The tilapia is a very timid feeder, but he has eaten everything I've put in there. But as you can see, the snakehead is interested. But unfortunately, interested doesn't mean always eats. And that's what I mean about the snakehead. Every type of food that I put in gets that reaction. A little bit of interest in it. Oh, I don't know about this. So if I show you, the worm's still there. The snakehead's just kind of guarding it. Saying, well, you're not having it, but I don't want it either. And then away it swims. Perplexing. So like I say, I've always wanted these and there will be a more specific video just on these. But for now, let's give them a feed and see if they're interested. My experience so far is they all kind of go, what's that, what's that, what's that, what's that? And then one of them goes in and the rest of them just go and rip it to pieces. They're going to prove me a liar now that I'm doing this on film. But yeah, they, they kind of school round like this and then one of them gets brave. Maybe if I take a step back. They appear to all be scared of the worm. We've got the worm here. The are all <laughs> grouped up at the back, so I'll get out of the way and see if that changes anything. It's almost taunting them. Come on, eat me if you dare. I guess they don't see many worms where they come from. If you look at the shapes and the colours of these fish, they are absolutely fantastic. I will do another video specifically on the Bucktooth Tetra, um, but they're famous for ganging up and being like piranhas and ripping scales and devouring other fish, so they need to be kept alone. But at the moment, <laughs> they look like the most timid fish I've ever kept. Alright, let's see if wafting a bit of bloodworms into the mix does anything. So it's now raining bloodworms over the top of the earthworm. Okay, something is clearly wrong. We're not able to trigger a feeding response even with bloodworms. They fed yesterday and did what they were meant to do on the tin. I don't know quite what's gone wrong today. Maybe I fed them too much yesterday. Oh, there we go. I'm such a bad fish tuber that even my scary aggressive fish aren't scary or aggressive. Who knows? I will figure this out and when you come back for a future video, 
all about these guys, I'm sure we'll have figured out what they like and what they don't like and how often to feed them and all those good things. But for now, a bit of a letdown. Mm. As ever, thank you for joining me for the video anyway, even if it was a bit of a disaster. A bit of a catch up, a bit of a what's going on in the fish room. Mostly more tidying to come. Um, but if you can help me out with any of the questions I asked about the feeding, about the behaviour of the Oscars, um, let me know in the comments. Join me on the Discord server and all these links will be down below. And if you can make it next Friday, 9pm, the 100th live stream, come along to that. It should be fun. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!